What's up internet? Carlos here from mash.key.com and today I wanted to bring you a quick tutorial on how to mount a VMDK virtual hard disk using Linux Lowe's Ubuntu. And you might ask yourself, what is Lowe's Ubuntu? Lowe's Ubuntu is a Linux live distribution that can assist you in your computer forensic investigations. It is completely free. You can download it from lowesbuntu.com and it will help you uh, in your data forensic tasks 100% free how cool is that now I wanted to bring you this tutorial because I wanted to go through the steps of converting a BMDK virtual hard disk to a raw, raw image and then we want to mount the operating system partition inside of that raw image and now you can you, you can do this uh, to assist you in your examination of a compromised machine or whatever it is that you have to do. Uh, if you are handed a VMDK virtual hard disk um, and you need to, let's say for example, run a timeline analysis on that file system, then you can go through the steps of converting it to a raw device on the fly without altering the validity or integrity of that image and we'll go through the steps of doing that right here now if this sounds interesting and you are interested in doing this then you are going to need to go to lowsbuntu.com and download lowsbuntu which is a linux live distribution what you're looking at here is i've gone through the steps of downloading the iso and i have created a lowsbuntu usb device once that lowsbuntu usb device was created i booted my uh, Lenovo machine from it and I am running a live version of Lowe's Ubuntu as we speak. Everything that I, you're going to see me do is going to be done using the live ver version. So if you want to follow along, go to Lowe'sBuntu.com, download your ISO and you should be able to replicate every single one of these steps. Excellent. So let's get started. Now, of course, if you want to follow along and do this, you're going to need to have Lowe's Ubuntu installed to a USB drive, a booted machine, and of course a VMDK virtual hard disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce an external USB 3.0 device that has a, a VMDK virtual hard disk located on it. I am about to connect it right now and what you're going to see is you're going to see it appear down here very, very shortly. Now Lowe's Ubuntu by default does not auto mount drives there it is finally appeared it does not auto mount drives and let's confirm that open up a terminal session and type in df-h and df-h will show you all the devices that have been mounted to Lowe's Ubuntu what you see right here is a partition that I have created on my, on my Lowe's Ubuntu thumb drive so that I can save any kind of data that I want including the recording of this video so if I did not have this partition and I and you shut down Lowe's Ubuntu because it's a live distribution anything that you have done will be deleted which is it, it has its positives and its negatives okay so obviously and we'll talk about that in a later video but um, the point of this video is to go through the steps of mounting a VMDK converting it to a raw device and then mounting the operating system uh, partition contain inside of that raw device let's go ahead and get started now I have introduced my external USB 3.0 drive which is right here I've said the Lowe's Ubuntu does not go through the process of auto mounting anything so you're gonna have to mount it yourself you can do it through a terminal or if you were to click right on it it will auto mount it it'll auto mount it it'll mount it in read and write mode if you were to click on it if you wanted to mount that in read only mode then you would have to do it through the terminal but in this instance it's just an external device containing a vmdk file system we'll just do it the easy way which is by simply just mounting it we click on it and there you go it opened up nautilus and it opened up that directory so it's now it now has been mounted you can validate that it has been mounted by running the same command that we ran earlier df-h and you can now see that my external usb 3.0 drive under dev forward slash sdd1 has now been mounted at the media mtk directory uh, under this directory right here 
Now let's navigate to that directory so that we can locate the VMDK file system that we want to mount. You can do this through the terminal or you can do it the easy way by navigating to it using Nautilus which is right here on the left hand side. We open Nautilus, we go to the external USB 3.0 drive and this directory right here contains, well these are all virtual machines but we're going to be targeting this uh, DVWA directory which contains this VMDK file right there that we're going to mount. Los Ubuntu has a Nautilus open terminal built into it so if you want to open up a terminal shell from here all you have to do is right click on it and click on open in terminal and you get a shell. Maximize that shell so we can have the entire view and ls-l will list the files inside of that directory. Here's the VMDK that we're going to be targeting. And we can finally move to the first step of mounting that VMDK. But before we do that, we need to create a directory where we can mount that VMDK. And we do that with the mkdir command. mkdir mnt vmdk is the directory that I'm going to create to uh, mount that VMDK. Um, we're going to need, because we're creating that directory in the MNT uh, directory, which is owned by root, we're going to need to elevate our privileges and uh, to be able to create that directory. So we do that with, um, let's just go ahead and elevate our privileges first with sudo su. And in order to elevate your privileges, you're going to need to know the password for MTK, which is MTK as well. Now, MTK is the single user and only user located in a Lowe's Ubuntu Live Linux distribution. Okay, uh, and you're going to need to know the password. Again, I'll repeat it one more time. MTK, which is you're going to need to know the password so that you can log, log in to the distribution when you boot up Lowe's Ubuntu. Uh, when you boot up any machine any machine or virtual machine using Lowe's Ubuntu. Great! So you can see that our prompt has changed from our user to our root. So now we can go ahead and continue with the process. Now we can issue mkdir mnt vmdk and that will create the directory. I press enter. We did not get any errors. That means that the directory has been created. Great! Now we can go ahead and convert that vmdk to a raw device using the tool VMDK mount which was created by Joaquin Metz who develops a lot of uh, forensic tools uh, in the uh, open source environment. Uh, he develops a lot of open source tools for Linux and um, I just want to say public, publicly say thank you for all the tools that you have uh, uh, released. VMDK mount is one of them. So let's go ahead and go through that process of converting the VMDK disk to a raw device. VMDK mount is the command, if I could spell. I'm going to look at locate the VMDK that we want, which is damn vulnerable, Windows 7-disk1.vmdk, and then we feed it the VMDK directory that we want to mount it to, and we press enter. We did not get any, get any errors back, so it looks like it worked. Now let's navigate to that VMDK directory to see what we have. Change directory with CD, MNT, VMDK, press enter, ls-l, and look at that. We see that we have our VMDK now converted to a raw disk. This is the entire raw device of this VMDK. It has been converted to a raw device on the fly. Great. Now, in order to be able to mount the operating system contained inside of this raw disk, we need to locate the offset into the volume of, of, of we need to locate the, the sector offset into that volume. And we do that with a sleuth kit tool called MMLS. Now, from here, you can also issue any kind of commands that have the ability to read data at a block device level. Uh, all of the, well, majority, if not all of the Sleuth Kit tools like FLS or um, any kind of uh, commands like iCAT, iFind, will have the ability to read this data at a block device. But the purpose of this video is to mount the volume contained inside of this raw disk. So we'll, we're going to go through that process. We issue MMLS and I press the uh, double tab so that 
it could auto populate the file and press enter and you can see that this device has two partitions this raw disk has two partitions inside of it this is the system partition for a Windows 7 installation and this is the sector offset into the operating system partition that contains all of the operating system files all, all of the operating system files including user data so we see that the beginning the sector offset into this volume is located 206,848 sectors away in order for us to be able to mount this into a directory we're gonna need to convert this number right here into a decimal value into a decimal offset so if there are 512 sectors in each if there are 512 bytes in each sector and we are 206,848 sectors away we can convert this into a dec into decimal by using BC so if we do echo 512 times 206848 and pipe it to BC here is the decimal value that we need I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and put it on my clipboard and now we are ready to mount these the NTFS OS volume located inside of this raw device so let's go ahead and do that now just like before we're gonna need a directory where we can mount that that volume so let's run the mkdir command one more time this time I'm gonna create a directory called raw under the root of the MNT directory so MNT raw we hit enter it looks like it worked now let's go ahead and mount it I'm gonna clear the screen to make it a little bit cleaner and run the MMLS command one more time so that you can see the sector offset and let's go ahead and mount that offset mount dash O for options and just as good habit we're gonna mount it read only and you don't have to use this flag because the MDK mounts mounts that raw device into a read-only mode anyways but just out of good habit it's always good to have it to mount uh, volumes in read-only manner so that you don't alter your evidence we hit double tab to add the file and then MNT raw which is the directory that we want to mount that NTFS file system in there now just like I told you before you're gonna need to tell mount the decimal offset into the volume so we do that with adding a comma here and telling it offset equals and the data from my clipboard that command looks good if we press enter and we don't get any errors it looks like it worked and let's validate that it worked by navigating into MNT raw ls-l and there it is here's your users directory and here's your windows directory so that's the data contained inside of the operating system partition of which is contained inside the raw device that was converted from a VMDK file. And there you have it. That's all there is to it, to convert a VMDK into a raw device and then mounting the operating system partition contained at that specific sector offset. There you have it. That's all there is. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave comments, and thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon.